Well, the flywheel looks fine. Oh no. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Don't go anywhere because I have one of the iconic rear engine snapper mowers in the shop today, and it has been impeccably maintained for the last 15 years. Unfortunately, even with the customer taking such good care of it, one mistake, and it's gonna cost them dearly. Now, one thing that was super cool about these snappers when they were made, they built them with these bars on the back. So if you need to do any kind of servicing to your deck, to your drive system, anything that requires you getting underneath, you didn't even have to jack it up. All you had to do was push it back and tilt it on its end and you can work on everything quite easily. With nothing on the front end of it, it's super light to pick up and flip over on its rear end. Now, unfortunately, we have seen this quite a few times in the shop when customers do this. And it's just a huge mistake that ends up costing them a lot of money. And hopefully after this video, you'll know what not to do to save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. But before we jump into today's video, if you're a fan of saving time, money, and frustration while fixing your own small engine equipment while watching in-depth tutorials, you've come to the right place because that's what I do. I upload a couple times a week, and if that sounds interesting, hit that like button, smash that subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment. I love to read through the comments, and I will reply to all the early commenters. Now, even though it's a super cool feature for you to just push it backwards and sit it on its rear end and be able to work on everything underneath, there's something that you have to do first you have to remove your battery. Uh, to do that, it's got a couple little prongs right up here. You're just going to pull it off of them, just like that. And you're able to take this whole cover off. But unfortunately, the customer did not remove their battery and they had it up on its rear end for days. And what happens when you've got a battery laying on its side? It leaks battery acid everywhere check that out that is no good so we're going to start tearing this thing apart we know it already needs another control bracket let's take this shroud off and see if it did any damage underneath so i used my 3 8 to remove all the bolts off the shroud and looking inside i think it looks pretty good i don't see any melty areas we have seen that before where it traveled up into this melted this melted the flywheel fan but the battery acid didn't go that direction it actually went between the flywheel and the engine and came out here on the starter so we're gonna have to see what else damage it might have done all right, so looking down in here, we can tell we're going to have to replace this control lever. The plastic bracket for the throttle control has broken, and it looks like uh, we might need to change that rod out there. Maybe the spring, and hopefully when we get behind here and take these bolts out, it didn't deteriorate the engine block itself. So first, I'm going to remove this flywheel and see if the alternator is damaged. To remove the flywheel, first we've got to get this cup off and we're going to use our 15 16th socket to remove that. Next, I'm going to use my half inch socket to remove these two bolts or you can use a T40 torque. That removes your flywheel fan. Now I'm gonna break out the flywheel puller and get this flywheel off. All right, so I've got it loose, but I wanted to share the reveal with you to uh, see if it's in good shape or if it's in really bad shape. Well, the flywheel looks fine. Oh no. All right, so I'm looking around and you can totally tell that the battery acid traveled down here and over to the starter, but everything looked pretty good around this way until I got 
to this side. It looks like there was a little bit more buildup. Now this does not look good, but we're gonna clean it up and we're gonna try to repair it anyways. And hopefully it uh, didn't mess it up too bad. So it looks to me like they got really lucky. The acid didn't go and do too much damage. Um, the stator looks like I'm gonna be able to clean that up. The starter, I'm a little hesitant about. Right now, the gear on top is sticking on the Bendix, so hopefully I can lube that up and it'll start going back down. We won't know until we put it back together and uh, see what it's doing. I did get a control bracket for them, so we are gonna change that out because theirs is completely destroyed, but let's see what we can do. I got it all washed off. We can see where there was battery acid, but uh, got it as clean as possible. Now we're gonna change out this control bracket. And from here, it looks like the alternator did clean up nicely. There's no pitted spots, so I think it's gonna be okay. Now I had already removed the fuel tank previously. It just sits in here and is pressed in with this indention right there. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove the entire tank bracket because it'll make it easier to get to all this. You're gonna use your T40 torque to remove the two bolts holding it on. All right, now that we've got that removed, there is one more bracket we're going to take off on top of the control plate. It takes a eight millimeter nut driver to remove the one bolt holding it on. Now we got a better view of what's going on here. Let me get you closer so you can see what it looks like. So everything actually after cleaning it up doesn't look that bad. The governor spring looks good. The governor arm does have a little pittiness to it, but it probably is gonna be okay. The throttle rod looks all right. The choke lever looks okay. So I, I'm pretty confident that a control bracket is all that it needs. Even the wiring, there was an outside sheath on this wire. I might put some more shrink on that, but these wires look okay. The paint got a little messed up down there, but hopefully the control bracket is all it needs. I got my new control bracket here. It's a part number 597209, and it comes with some new screws, and looks like it's gonna work. Now at this point, this is when I tell you, take a picture. That way you know how everything comes off and goes back on. All right, so I'm not gonna video me actually taking these off because um, that would be boring, but I am gonna be using my 1130 seconds to remove this nut holding the kill wires on. And then I believe it's an eight millimeter to take the throttle uh, cable off and also the eight millimeter to remove the one, two, three bolts that holds the whole bracket on. All right, so I've moved the kill wire insulator from my old bracket to my new bracket and also the governor spring. So I have it sitting just like this so you can see the orientation of it. I've brought this all the way down to where I've got the most play to play with so I can reconnect it to my governor. All right, so I'm grabbing it here. It's a pretty tout spring, putting it in the back right there and we've got that connected now. Next, I'm gonna bring my choke lever back in through my bracket before I mount it to the engine. All right, to put your throttle and choke cable back into your bracket, you're going to want to put it, pull your lever all the way back to where you've got some length here to work with. That way we can get it inside its little hole right there. And then you've got your bracket started and we're going to pull it all the way back. We're going to put it in the choke position. And then we can tighten it down right where it's at. You want it all the way tight in the choke position and that's where it goes. Once we've got it tightened down, we're going to check it, make sure it's got full range of motion there. Perfect. So I'm going to throw another battery on this, put the flywheel, the shrouds back on, and let's see if it starts. All right, let's see how she runs.
Hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future. Thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. If you haven't found us on Facebook yet, find us at facebook.com slash Chicanic. Find us on Instagram at The Real Chicanic or find me at Chicanic.com where you get your own t-shirts, hoodies, and long sleeve shirts. Thanks and have a great day.